I think quite a lot of people have joined. So let's begin with the session. Am I audible and is the screen visible to everyone? Please let me know in the chat box. OK, all right. I hope I'm visible to everybody. So before we begin with the session, let me start off with a quick question. So what do you think is common between Uber, Uber, Ola, Paytm, and Snapchat? So the most obvious answer that you would say is that they are all apps, right? But the not so obvious answer is the fact that these applications have been developed by young developers, most of them, by young developers who did not have millions of dollars to invest. So many companies that create these apps, they have been valued at over $10 billion. And even, I'm not really sure if the value that I've received is accurate, but this highlights the fact that the Android market is not just growing, but it's actually exploding. And that is actually good news for all of you present in the meeting right now. And almost everybody right now, if you see, they ha everybody has a smartphone. So that is another reason why the market is actually growing at such a fast pace. So this is actually a fantastic opportunity for us because it gives us the opportunity to build creative and helpful applications which can solve thousands of real world problems. And there are actually two things that go into creating these apps. So the first thing that is required is your creativity to actually come up with the idea to build these apps. And the next thing that is required is the technical skills to make your idea a reality. And though we cannot do much with the first part, what we can definitely help you with is the second part, which is to train you with the technical skills that you will require to actually develop these Android apps. So keeping this in mind, we have designed a four day event for you. So today is the first day where our expert speaker will talk to you about Android development and the basics of Compose. And she will also highlight all the wonderful, wonderful possibilities that you can achieve using Compose. Then over the next three days, we will have a hands-on workshop where you will get to actually create these Android apps from scratch. And that is actually the best way where you can retain the knowledge that you will receive from us when you're actually doing it yourself. So make sure you join us and you will actually come across paid courses which will teach you this. But we are going to do that. To, we are going to teach it to you for absolutely no charge. So make sure you do not miss this opportunity and make sure you join us over the next three days as well. And I'll be sharing more information and details about the workshop at the end of the session. So make sure you join us. And in the meantime, you can also join our WhatsApp group if you're not from VJTI. So we'll update you with all the events that we have planned for you for app development. Also, OK, so now let's begin with the session. So before we start, I wanted to quickly introduce all the teams that have made this event possible. So this event is a joint collaboration of three GDSEs. So GDSE VJTI, GDSE KJSIT, and GDSE PCCOE. I am Arisha Kamath. I am the GDSE lead at VJTI. And I have with me Om and Manasvi. Om and Manasvi, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Good evening, everybody. I'm Om Bedwe. I'm the GDSE lead of PCCOE. Good evening, everyone. I'm Manasvi Shetty. I'm the GDSC lead of KJSIT. Thank you so much, Om and Manasi. Now I would like to introduce our speaker for today. So our guest speaker is Bhavna Thakkar, ma'am. She is a Google developer expert, and she is also a senior software engineer at Mega. She is also a WTM member and a final pass editor at Codeco. And she also has a YouTube channel by the name of Learn Android where she shares a lot about her learning. So if you want to know more about her, make sure you check out her YouTube channel. She has more than 100 videos, and all of these videos are bite-sized, so it will not take you too much time to check them out. And also, along the way, you pick up a lot of important concepts and skills. So make sure you give that a look. And with that introduction and context, I would like to invite Bhavna Ma'am to start the session. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Alicia, for the wonderful uh, introduction. And uh, now I think we are ready to start. Uh, you guys can hear me, right? I share my screen. 
आ जाएगी जरूर फिर हम आते हैं अबे कल ओके अलीशा लेट मी नो इफ यू सी माय स्क्रीन यस मैम इट्स विजिबल ओके सो वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू डिस्कसिंग अबाउट जेटपेक कंपोज टुडे एंड हाउ इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द ट्रेडिशनल एंड्रॉइड यूआई व्हिच वाज बेस्ड ऑन एक्सएमएल ओके uh this is a brief about me uh, as alisha has given uh, my introduction so i'll not go in detail okay uh, just uh, a summary i have been doing android since to, uh, 2013 and i i love this technology so i continue to uh, do it i don't know for long <laughs> for how much time but i just love it and uh, two things uh, that you can check it out uh, my youtube channel uh, where all the videos are in kotlin and uh, because i am a fan of uh, modern android development so whatever you do if you do it uh, using a uh, latest technology uh, uh, especially in the production level apps uh, what happens is that like today i develop something or uh, uh, tomorrow a uh, regression comes so uh, the app may not be compatible on the uh, you know uh, uh, lower versions of android and all those stuff your efforts are reduced in fixing those bugs and regression when you uh, follow some best uh, development practices and modern android development so uh, this is where uh, my focus is when i share the things with the community and one more thing for students uh, what you can check it out is uh, the uh, codeco or it is also known as it's just a rebranding done recently it's uh, revendorlich.com which is now now uh, known as codeco here also uh, the uh, tutorials that we publish for android and ios are uh, available for free to uh, readers uh, there are video courses which are paid uh, you have to buy a subscription but uh, the articles are available for free and there is a team like team of 4 to 5 members working for 2 to 3 months in order to publish one tutorial so again those are very high quality tutorials uh, you should always uh, subscribe i i would suggest you create an account there and uh, subscribe to their newsletter which comes i think uh, every week so you get to know about what is happening recently in the mobile development okay uh, so what we are going to cover today uh, what we will be covering today is what is jetpack compose uh the second thing uh, why use jetpack compose so i'll be comparing xml way of doing things with compose and the third thing which i am not going to touch is how to implement jetpack compose so as alisha mentioned you are going to have the workshops uh, on the subsequent days for that what i would rather uh, do is uh, guide you uh, uh, all to uh, some official links which are you know which will save your time those are the uh, official documents and videos from google that will help you learn uh, um, by best utilizing your time okay because if you uh, blindly go to internet you will see tons of material and then what to start where to start so my focus is uh, guiding you all uh, to write resources for learning so let's start uh, with uh, the definition uh, what is jetpack compose so jetpack compose is android's modern toolkit for building native ui it is built completely in kotlin and it makes ui development faster and easier the benefit of uh, using jetpack compose uh, in your apps is that you can focus more on features and you spend less time building the ui okay it reduces lot of boilerplate code which we uh, earlier used to write uh, by doing uh, the xml way of the ui development so jetpack compose uh don't confuse it with like it is not a complete uh, a new android framework it's a ui part the ui framework for android which was traditionally done using xml it is now the jetpack compose ui okay so the ui is different ui way of doing the uh, things is different now let's uh, discuss why use compose so see android uh, was released in 2008 so uh, why the uh, traditional android ui toolkit uh, which uses views 
why the android team at google thought about a completely new ui framework so we for this we will first discuss what are the uh, problems in the android ui toolkit the android ui toolkit is based on xml layouts it uses views and view groups right so the current android ui toolkit is now over 14 years old and the problem is that with every new android release the view.java file gets bigger and bigger and in the current api it has got more than 30000 lines of code too many layers of inheritance so the problem was that the current android ui toolkit is increasingly harder to maintain it also scales very poorly these are not just uh, these are not the only problems let's discuss the other problems as well see in the uh, current android ui toolkit your activity file is in java or kotlin and your views are in xml so you have two different languages uh, the java or kotlin uh, for the activity or the fragment and then for the views you are using xml so there is a language difference because of this language difference you cannot directly communicate with the xml file okay so you first have to inflate it into a kotlin or java object then communicate with it now this indicates tight coupling and introduces a uh, dependency and tight coupling uh, come to compose everything is in one language that is kotlin in jetpack compose when we build the ui using compose you built ui using the composable functions written in kotlin so there are absolutely no xml files if your app is completely developed in jetpack compose okay so there is only single language which is kotlin if your app is completely developed in compose and it does not use your the xml views so this single language gives you loose coupling now you get the other advantages as well you can better organize your files uh, you can uh, have your product uh, project with uh, the structure uh, which is modularized your ui related code you can reuse very easily uh, but uh, don't get confused uh, that uh, I mentioned that there are no XML files uh, in the case where your uh, uh, your app is completely in Jetpack Compose, but that doesn't mean you cannot uh, implement Compose in your existing apps. So in your existing apps, you can have everything. Like when Kotlin was introduced in 2018, it was interoperable with Java. So now uh, the actual scenario is like apps can have both Java code, the legacy code and Kotlin also. So we do new development in Kotlin. The legacy screen could be in Java. Same is happening with Compose. We started adopting Compose. So new screens can be developed in Compose. The older screens can continue to use the XML. So everything can work together uh, in your uh, project and it builds successfully. There are no issues in that. Okay. Now, how do you uh, set uh, the uh, if you if you ever uh, worked on an Android app and uh, if you have uh, like uh, in the activity you say set content view and then you pass the uh, XML file okay for the layout right now in compose how do you inflate the UI we use the extension function set content and pass it the composable function okay like this on the right side that you see so the ui that you see on the screen is rendered by the composable function so in jetpack compose your ui is simply a function of data that is why the jetpack compose is said to follow declarative programming now uh, you guys wonder i coined a new term declarative programming uh can uh, anybody uh, tell me here what are the two different types of programming you can type in the chat box apart from declarative programming what is the other type of programming okay
yes i think pankaj and uh, sachit what uh, you guys are saying is correct the other type of programming is uh, imperative programming so there is a difference uh, between two styles of programming declarative and imperative so what is declarative programming in declarative programming the program specifies what is to be done okay and in imperative programming it specifies how it is to be done so when uh, when we were doing the uh, traditional xml way of uh, building the ui we were specifying how it is to be done okay now that how is changed to what in declarative uh if i i thought about going in uh, detail of this topic but then it would have just uh, diverted our attention to the main topic so if you are interested uh, you can explore more on declarative versus imperative uh, but uh, i just wanted to mention this that uh, what we are doing in jetpack compose is declarative programming okay so i leave it up to you all students to uh, explore more if you are interested now let's move on to how to build the ui using jetpack compose so uh, let's discuss some of the common layouts uh, which you uh, see uh, as android developers or even uh, as uh, the android app users okay so one of the most uh, common layouts is horizontal linear layout right so uh, what do we do uh, in a horizontal linear layout so when, when we like uh, build using xml we use this term horizontal linear layout it is a layout in which the elements are arranged horizontally one after the other in a row right so row is the keyword now when you are building the screens using compose remember this keyword horizontal linear layout means row so the composable equivalent that you get it from jetpack compose library is row so if you want an image and text you can put it inside a row and your uh, horizontal linear layout is built okay you don't need an xml file to do that okay so if a uh, horizontal linear layout uh, uh, the compose equivalent is a row the vertical linear layout equivalent will be column right there are no prizes for guessing that it's that simple because in vertical linear layout you are going to arrange the elements vertically one below the other right so that's the column we we the layman term is a column right so that's the same term used uh, in compose so when when you wrap inside column everything will come one below the other okay the compose is very uh, so uh, uh, very uh, i can say user friendly or developer friendly uh, framework as in if i want to have a space between the two elements okay image and text i have something called a spacer okay so i just say spacer and specify the width or height and it will give me space between two elements if i want a divider uh, the uh, uh, the element that is available from the library is like a uh, no, divider so what do you think a layman language uh, uh, you would find most of the things here so the ui development using compose so see, see the advantages the learning curve is not that great i mean it's very easy to adopt very easy to learn and uh, you end up with very less code the organized code because of the single language and it opens up lot of other possibilities for you to explore like your server side you because you spend less time building the ui you have more time to build your business logic you have more time to uh, have some solutions which are uh, no, to be developed on the server side so i i tell you my experience i have been working as an android developer since 20, 2013 okay in the earlier days we used to have so many issues uh, developing the ui or the android studio earlier was not that great uh, now it is like the emulator also works okay uh, earlier we used to have so many issues with that that your the entire day goes in you know fixing those bugs and uh, getting uh, the thing build ready on the android studio 
that we never thought about you know taking out time to uh, 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 do uh, something apart from being a android developer or see learn some server side technologies or you know uh, develop your skill set because here the time goes more now the things have changed now because if you learn these things faster uh, you get more time to learn the other things and your uh, profile as a portfolio grows uh, more okay so uh, as the technology is advanced uh, here also in the android framework also you get more guidance you get more ready made uh, ready made uh, things i can say so um, you become uh, like we i can say we started at 2013 now it's 20 uh, 23 right so after 10 years uh, we feel it is we are lucky in the past 2 3 years that we are getting so many things uh, from the android team at google itself which we were not getting it earlier okay right so uh, take the advantage of it now uh, come to uh, the uh, one more uh, commonly used layouts recycler view so if you build any android app a uh, list is going to be a crucial part or i think i would say a definite part of your android app be it a very simple app that you are doing it for your learning or your production level app you are going to have list in it okay so we implement list using a, a recycler view in the traditional xml way in the compose what you can use is lazy row okay because it's horizontal it will be lazy row and uh i wanted to compare the amount of code that we write for a recycler horizontal recycler view with a lazy row in compose so if you have to uh, develop recycler uh, horizontal recycler view then uh, you either first have the activity or fragment then um, your xml file for that fragment right so there is one xml file then for each of the items you will need an xml file that see item list item layout dot xml or something like that then you need an adapter adapter class to bind your data to the ui so this much of code we used to write for the android ui toolkit okay the traditional one now in compose as i told you there are no xml files so everything is done in using the composable function <coughs> so what we do is to the main composable function we pass this list of items so it could be list of news it could be list of uh, recipes list of bank accounts whatever the data you have and then you pass it to lazy row then items and you pass the list the, so this is items is an inbuilt function and then you need one more composable function which will define the layout for each of your item that's it so only this much that you write like two composable functions that you write and your horizontal recycler view is developed so understand the amount of code uh, uh, reduced with compose same goes with vertical recycler view so uh, with vertical recycler view you use lazy column and if you have grid views like a horizontal grid and vertical grid compose provides you a uh, lazy vertical grid or lazy horizontal grid as well and i think if nothing fits your uh, uh, requirement uh, if you have something custom you can go for lazy layout okay so i'll i'll give you the link for the resources so we covered what is compose we covered why use compose now as a student your uh, main interest would be like i want to be an android developer or i want to learn android development from where to start so as i told you if you go to internet there will be tons of resources right so you should always go to the official doc documentation to learn something i would recommend this link as a master link uh, for all of you so this is a uh, developer.android.com and the compose page here you find everything like uh, if i take you down okay if you are completely new to android development 
okay you've never done android development even with the xml way in your career then you can start with this android with basic scores okay so you can take these courses and you can learn compose and uh, one advice while you are doing it see if you go to any of the unit there could be uh, if i go to any of these uh, i can say it will be mix of learning videos okay and then video and then code lab okay so there are times that you just watch something there would be workshops integrated there could be videos with workshops uh, informational videos then there could be code labs so uh, don't consider it as a book so it's not that uh, you will master you will read the book you will go through uh, this uh, links in one or two days and you become android developer no what you should do is uh, have your laptop with you okay and one phone for testing and you practice alongside what you learn side by side so code labs you should always do by practice then only that will be your real learning be it just uh, in one day you just uh, complete one or two uh, uh, that is okay rather than doing everything your goal should not be just to complete the thing what you learn at the end should be important okay so i was here in this link so if you are new you take this course if you are somebody who has done some development in the uh, android uh, using the traditional xml way and you just want to learn compose okay you don't want to learn android basics then you can take this course this is what we have been also following even i went through this course i don't know why this shows uh, activities remaining otherwise i have completed this three uh, pathways and two are remaining so basically this is for existing android developers and here also uh, there are mix of uh, you know videos and code labs and uh, uh, it's a very good um, well maintained uh, you know uh, course for users done uh, by the official team is so you can rely on it right apart from these two uh, what i suggest uh, you students is like if you wish to become an android developer you should subscribe to this android developers youtube channel okay just subscribe it turn on the notification so for the past one or two years you will see that they have been publishing lot of content on compose and especially the mad skills now mad uh, stands for modern android development so uh, what is like modern android development i can tell you in brief see uh, earlier uh, when we were doing development in 2013 14 everyone was using their own way of doing it like somebody will use mvvm architecture somebody will use mvp okay for uh, networking uh, people used to use uh, different libraries like retrofit somebody use wally okay there was no guidance also uh, much of the guidance from the official team uh, android team at google so we were free to use anything but now uh, for the past one or two year two two three years i have seen they have become opinionated so they say okay use this architecture okay for uh, persistence use this okay they hilt use hilt for dependency injection so they are giving you more and more guidance on what you should use it and if you use that those libraries and tools are constantly updated and your work as a developer is reduced so uh, as students also you should start uh, things right or uh, what is recommended so be sure to subscribe to this channel okay and after this session if you want to have a workshop a small workshop uh, then i have also few videos on my youtube channel so this is basics workshop this you can code along okay understand the state and state hoisting uh, from these videos okay what are lazy layouts and compose so you can check this out as well okay and what else i wanted to share with you okay uh 
I'll come to that uh, later or uh, let me just show you. This is also very important guide to Android app architecture. So Google recommends that you build your app with this recommended app architecture. We'll touch this in the session, but uh, this is the link for you to explore more. The compose samples. Yes, the compose samples are important. So these are the sample apps built by uh, a Google uh, Android team. And each of these sample app has something to uh, showcase, like what it contains and sample app that focuses on something. OK, so you can check those out. OK. And uh, this is one app I have open source, which is also built in uh, Jetpack Compose with uh, this uh, uh, architecture, whatever we can say, clean architecture, OK, UI layer, data layer, domain layer. So this also you can check it out. So I'll share this references with you all, which will be helpful to you. OK, and let's go back to our slides where we were. So from where to start, we were, right? So I would say, uh, if you want to start, start with the official, uh, you know, resources to save your time. Okay. And you don't feel frustrated that you have so much. Okay. So this is not actually uh, learning any uh, web development or mobile development. Consider it as a little different from our engineering books. Okay. We just take a book and uh, we just uh, study it and it's done. No. Uh, the approach should be different. It should be more of a practical hands-on stuff. Okay. Now coming to common questions from students on uh, social media. So many students ask me this question or even junior Android developers that should I learn Java for Android development or directly Kotlin? So uh, my answer to you uh, for this is that, see, if any new development that you do, uh, we have now in the industry, the best practice and everyone has started doing new development in Kotlin. But the fact that uh, even the Kotlin was announced uh, as a official uh, 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 language for uh, Android in 2018 or so. So for the first 10 years, uh, the apps were developed in Java. Okay. And not uh, entire code of the app may, may not have been migrated to Kotlin yet. So you should be able to read Java at least, if not write, or sometimes you have to write as well. So basically you have to learn both, but uh, you can master Kotlin more, but knowing Java or be able to read and write Java also is required. Okay. And actually it helps both the languages are uh, object oriented programming languages. So the OOPS concept that you learn in one language will be applied uh, in the other as well. Okay. Uh, students also ask me some tips and advice on how to go about, uh, you know, learning and implementing or some are looking for a job as well as an Android developer. So what are the tips? Okay. Apart from the learning resources, after I share learning resources, they ask me what are the tips or what is the advice that you can give me? So I would say there are two ways to practice what you have learned. One is or uh, create an open source project on, on GitHub. Put some sample project from what you learned. OK, start with very simple. Based on how much you feel confident, you can start developing a very simple to do list app or a calculator app. OK, something which also does not require any networking also in, at the start. Then you can do that. OK, so based on your uh, learning and confidence level, start some sample app, put it on GitHub. OK. And then uh, in, if you're in college, see you have a, a circle, your friends, share it with your friends and get some feedback from them and then improve it. Okay, this is how you learn, you improve a product. Okay, that will help you. So one is uh, creating an open source project. The other also uh, uh, possible way is that if you have any uh, idea for an app in your mind, okay, you want to develop, then you can publish an app on the Google Play Store. It not it need not be very fancy app. It may not uh, attract very uh, many downloads at the start. Okay, so your focus at the beginning should be learning. Okay, 
and then you improve as you push an update to the app so first uh, minimum version you can uh, publish and uh, then later you can do it now for android developers this is possible because uh, in order to publish an app on google play store the fees is 25 dollars only okay for 25 years so this is something you can try it out i think for ios developers it's something like 9900 dollars every year so this is something unless you're going uh, for you know as a uh, in your career you may not spend that much there okay but for android you have a uh, uh, this is also option if you want to do it so there are two options uh, build an open source project or if you have some uh, app in your mind you want to help your lo uh, local community your society some school or institute want to use this use your app okay you can try your learning uh, and develop an app third thing what you can do in your free time is like uh, start as a you know if you have free time start as a freelancer and uh, develop an app for somebody okay in a group also you can do it okay so uh, as a freelancer don't focus on you know getting how much you will get paid for that you should uh, your uh, uh, aim should be to learn from it okay uh, the other part is uh, secondary right so these are the, uh, some tips to get you started to build your portfolio okay and then you can start as a junior android developer with some organization okay and you have something to showcase to them because you have an open source project you can give a link to them and the interviewers can ask you questions on that if you have linked to a google play store app uh, you can uh, uh, you know uh, what you can say convince them okay that i know the basics of android app development i even know how to publish an app to google play store you can uh, answer the questions when you have something which you can showcase okay okay how is jetpack compose applied to real world apps so this is basically um, in the real world apps production apps we have already started the industry has already started uh, adopting jetpack compose and the way we did it from java to kotlin migration like new development we do it in kotlin or whenever we get time we migrate the java screens to kotlin same uh, uh, strategy is being adopted in jetpack compose as well there are a few apps uh, in the google play store which are completely migrated uh, to jetpack compose but uh, those kind of projects require a lot of uh, you know budget and a very big team okay uh, so there may not be so many apps which are completely migrated to jetpack compose if the if those were the legacy apps but the common strategy is like uh, migrate screen by screen okay the new development you do it in compose existing is in xml and then you plan some migration plan to uh, uh, migrate screen by screen from xml to compose okay so one day you have like uh, you reach a stage where your app is completely in compose okay in order to do a uh, uh, ui development uh, in jetpack compose you need to understand uh, this as well the guide to android app architecture or uh, this is like google recommends that you do the entire app development uh, by splitting the layers so each layer has a separate concern so like your data layer will have the repository implementations and data sources your uh, domain layer will have uh, the use cases with use cases generally contains a business logic okay uh, which you can reuse across view models and repository definitions and when your ui layer the stakeholder will be view models and your ui elements will be jetpack compose so see by this diagram i wanted to demonstrate where does jetpack compose stand in the entire app it is just a part of ui so ui layer itself has like ui elements and stakeholders the stakeholders uh, if you use mvvm view model okay which is recommended stakeholders will be your view models okay ui elements will be your compose okay so in mvvm architecture your view model uh, will be your stakeholder the compose will be the ui elements and your model will be like here in the data layer you get the data 
domain layer will contain your business logic okay so uh, these are the resources that we discussed today and you can go and check them out and alisha we can uh, go with uh, the question answer session yes uh, yeah sure thank you so much for the excellent presentation it was very insightful and i think we have 5 to 10 minutes for some quick q and a so let's see how many questions we can squeeze in in the given time mm -hmm. so the first question is how does jetpack compose differ from traditional android app development okay so uh, basically if you are like uh, uh, listen to my presentation well what uh, i mentioned is like traditional android app development uh, the xml part okay of building the ui that will be replaced by jetpack compose okay nothing else changes so if you have like a uh, an ideal uh, ui uh, layer uh, sorry best architected uh, app that has all the layers uh, com uh, completely defined then you will just replace your xml with jetpack compose so it does not really change the other uh, layers in your app it does not change the traditional uh, way of uh, uh, the traditional android app uh, approach getting it but uh, in order to implement jetpack compose in your existing app the first requirement that comes is like migrate your app to clean architecture mm, i hope that answers your question yes that was a very detailed answer thank you so much the and for the next question i would like to hand it over to om om could you cover the next question yeah so ma'am uh, can we can we use jetpack compose for both android and app development and how does jetpack compose handle ui state management okay see uh, if you go to the definition of uh, jetpack compose it's a ui toolkit for building native ui okay for android so uh, for ios no jetpack compose is not uh, cannot be used for ios development it is only for android development ios has a similar swift ui framework okay swift ui framework is used uh, i think it is very much similar to jetpack compose but that they use swift ui for ui development uh, coming to compose compose is available for larger screens it is also available for wear os and android tv also so all the android related technologies jetpack compose uh, is available for ui but not for ios for ios if there is something called swift ui and your uh, what was there was one more question uh, uh, that you mentioned om yes ma'am how does it handle how does jetpack compose handle ui state management okay how does it handle ui state management so i will again share my screen and the resources that uh, the link that i gave you uh, okay here uh, you guys can see my screen right so if i if you go to this uh, courses right uh, want to learn compose basically the third module architecture and state if you go to that the first three uh, talks about the compose state okay the state management will be covered here the advanced state and side effects and compose state of mind these two uh, does cover how the compose manages state and understanding state in jetpack compose is very important if you don't understand it like you are learn uh, you learn to develop the ui but ui will be uh, like uh, impacted by the state changes so understanding the state understanding these things is very important and that is why uh, when i felt uh, uh, developers are struggling for that when i learned it i quickly published uh, tutorials on that so this first and second one if you uh, look at these two uh, state how to manage state in compose and state hosting you can check these out as well or even uh, this uh, here uh, you can also search there must be videos there are videos on the state and this uh, this guide is definitely there uh, which one uh, this yes so here it will cover how to manage state yeah thank you ma'am yeah we can move with the 
move on with the other questions. Yeah. Mansvi. Yeah. Yeah. So my question was that I recently came to know that Twitter has uh, converted itself entirely into compose. So I wanted to know how existing applications move into compose. Like, how do we rebuild an existing application using Compose? OK. See, uh, there are uh, uh, different approaches and the decision taken uh, by the real world production apps. If the decision is taken based on what kind of budget uh, your customer or the uh, product owner has and the team size, OK, your uh, current team size. Because your app would be uh, uh, for the uh, real world production apps, there are users in, in thousands and millions actually using the app. Okay, so you don't want any impact on them. At the same time, uh, the budget, the uh, developer availability, all of this take into account the decision, final decision taken of migration to Compose. Definitely, we are moving to Compose, but uh there are some certain apps which are completely migrated to compose uh but those would be very few okay uh the strategy the common strategy now adopted uh, in the existing apps is that any new development that we do we do it in compose the like uh, we did it for kotlin when the kotlin came we stopped new development in java so we started new development in kotlin the new screens that you do is in kotlin and jetpack compose and at the same time, you have uh, some goals like refactoring goals that you want to migrate those existing screens. Some of the screens, look at this quarter, we will uh, migrate, say, three to four screen to compose. Next quarter, we'll take four more, okay, depending on your team size. And ultimately, one day will come when you have your entire app migrated to compose, migrated to Kotlin. No more legacy code, which we call Java code and XML code is now considered as the legacy code okay i uh, hope that answers your question manasvi yes ma'am thank you so much for the information ma'am we have certain questions in the chat box yes i am looking at that uh wait so can Dart and Kotlin be used together? Oh, Dart and Kotlin. So I think uh, you are referring uh, to this uh, Flutter development, like uh, Flutter uses Dart. So now if you go for uh, Flutter, you can build uh, the apps for both Android and iOS. So that will be a different technology uh, for mobile development, okay, different, uh, approach for mobile development. So either you go for native iOS development or using uh, Swift and uh, either you go for Android development using Kotlin, that's native and if, uh, or you go for uh, uh, like cross-platform development using Flutter. Oh, I uh, am not sure can that be in Kotlin be used together because those are uh, different development approaches, like uh, different ways you build apps, mo mobile development, right? Then, okay, coming to next question. Uh, is there any performance change by using Jetpack Compose? Uh, performance uh, change, I would say, uh, there aren't, uh, we have not heard in the real world uh, apps uh, any performance, uh, you know, uh, problems uh, using Compose. So you can very well migrate your existing UIs to Compose. Sometimes it happens that because uh, uh, if you fail to understand how state uh, changes or if you fail to understand how recomposition occurs in Compose. So uh, if you have not done that part correctly, you might uh, have uh, some issues in performance, but then you can, uh, Android Studio has like a layout inspector as well, where you can see how decomposition is ha happening. So you get into how uh, learning how to debug the performance issues and then you can fix them. So there are no hurdles in such of uh, performance uh, by Jetpack Compose. And if there are, uh, there must be solution to that. If we are starting Android development, should we directly use Compose? 
Oh uh, yes, recommended is like you develop develop an app in Compose only. But as I told you, you should be able to read Java. You should be able to read XML code, right? Because if you start, uh, your app will have Kotlin and Compose. But uh, what if you go to a company which has the app developed ten years ago? So uh, so it will have everything mix of code. So you should be able to read the XML uh, and the Java code. What IDE would be better for development, IntelliJ or Android Studio? So IntelliJ IDE, you can use it for uh, learning Kotlin. But uh, ultimately, to learn Android, you will have to uh, install Android Studio. OK. What happens to activity on fragment life cycle in Compose? So activity and uh, fragment life cycle. Uh, Sankit, you can uh, go and check out a uh, navigation in Compose uh, code lab. Basically, when you build a complete app using Compose, you just have a single activity and your screens will be composable screens. So those composables will have the life cycle. OK, uh, in existing apps, you will have activities, fragments, everything. And then uh, the views of fragment you can convert to Compose. So that way you will handle it. But uh, if you uh, build a complete app using Compose, you will just have a single activity and all the screens will be composable screens. Oh, uh, then. How is uh, deployment different in Compose as compared to other techs in Kotlin? Deployment as in, see, uh, you, uh, Jetpack Compose is a UI framework, right? So uh, what uh, it also offers is like Compose previews. If you go to the links, uh, the even the basic links of learning Compose, uh, or if you go to the Jetpack Compose basics workshop on my YouTube channel, you will see that you don't have to deploy your code to emulator or real device in order to see your UI in action. You have something like at the rate preview annotation. So while you're developing or uh, writing the composable code, you just say at the rate preview to the composable function and you can just uh, see the static screen. Okay, so uh, that preview feature you can utilize. You can anytime build the app, like uh, put it on the device or emulator to see in action, but deployment is not mandatory to see the compose in action. There is one more question related to web, like web got 3D elements included using 3D JS. And do we have ways to integrate 3D or shaded objects in Android? Oh, uh, my apologies, but I am not aware of this technology. So, and I know never done this part. So maybe you can uh, explore more on the internet for this question. Uh, Vatsal Gandhi, uh, yes. Alicia, I think I've covered uh, the questions. Okay, ma'am. There's just one last question. It says, how does the community and support system for Jetpack Compose compare to other Android app development tools and libraries? Okay. Uh, see, uh, as compared to other Android app development, because it is something which uh, Google and the Android team at Google is pushing every Android developer to learn. It is something new for them. Okay, so they are constantly asking for feedback also, and the community support is great. OK, like uh, as an Android uh, GD, I'm going to participate in the product feedback se sessions. Also, the Jetpack Compose uh, performance uh, uh, session as well, where we discuss uh, like what are the uh, if there are any performance issues that we have faced as developers in Jetpack Compose. So they constantly listen to the feedback and the next uh, version when it comes out. OK, uh, they try to in, uh, integrate those uh, issues. OK, solution to those issues in that. So the community support is great. Uh, I told you subscribe to Android Developers YouTube channel. If you just subscribe and click on that bell icon and for the next one month, just notice the uh, Compose. Most of the uh, things when you related everything Compose, uh, they publish. Okay, So they want you to know what is new coming up and try it out. So community support is great. 
and they are asking us to move to this particular stuff you know as soon as possible so there is not no harm in moving to compose now in fact for as a, a community member uh, i have been involved in you know giving talks so uh, when we give the talk we have to first submit the proposals okay so here the topic was fixed your uh, like uh, leads wanted me to uh, deliver a session on compose even if the session was not topic was not clear and i if i was asked to uh, uh, submit a proposal for a talk i have seen that if i submit compose related talk it gets accepted because that is what the demand of the developer community right now okay thank you so much ma'am that yeah. was the last question that we had so let's wrap up this session now and i would actually like to thank you bhavna ma'am for the insightful presentation and for the very helpful answers that you gave during the session and also before we conclude i wanted to take this opportunity to share with everyone that we reached out to bhavna ma'am only a few days before the event but ma'am not just agreed to be a part of the event but she worked extra hard to actually take the efforts and build the entire presentation which was very in depth and helpful so thank you so much ma'am for all the help and yeah. Also, special thanks to GDSC KJSIT and GDSC PCCOE, who pulled in their resources in making this event a success. Also, just wanted to remind you one last time that this was our first day in the four-day event series. Tomorrow onwards, we are going to start with our hands-on workshop. So make sure you join us over the next three days because this knowledge will stay with you for a long time when you're actually building the application yourself. And we hope to hear some good news from you too about the awesome apps that you will launch and we have shared a whatsapp group link in the chat box so if you're not from vgti you can join the group and we will be sharing our updates and announcements regarding the events that we'll have so looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow and this is arisha kamath signing off thank you and goodbye